So this week, I got the opportunity to spend some time with the Paco Group in Hereford, England. As it was the first time I was learning about this sport, I thought, why not document it? Good afternoon from the UK guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Abhinav and on this channel, I tell you everything about the UK and today, I'm meeting the Paco group called Urban Lost Spirit here in Hereford. Since I was busy behind the camera filming some of my favorite slow-mo shots, I let the lads tell their own story. Hey G, how you doing? Good bro, good. That's good. So How's that look? How's that look? You look absolutely bangable. Oh, nice. We're out here doing some parkour right now. Isn't that right, lads? Yeah, yeah. bro. So Alex is going to put his foot right here. Show him, Alex. Yeah. Right there. And he's going to do a wall backflip straight off it. Two. With every flip and move, I was learning something new about these guys. I was dumbfounded to hear how long some of these guys had been training for. I did um, trampolining for nine years, so <laughs> professional trampolining. So about four years ago, I started doing parkour properly. In total, I'd like to say about six years. Movement in general, it's been a thing since I was very, very young. So I remember when I was about eight or something, doing a front handspring over a little bench. And my first backflip, I must have been 11. Parkour is a risky sport. One wrong move and it can be fatal. In 2017, a British guy called Nye lost his life in Paris whilst attempting a dangerous stunt. Today, he has a lot of respect in the parkour community in the UK. But I wondered what the parents of these young blokes thought about it. My mum kind of hates it, but um, as I said, I started pretty early on, so she kind of had to deal with it. Um, I stopped telling her about stuff and then I showed her after it was done. So rather than saying I'm going out to do something dangerous, I just show her the dangerous thing that I did. Uh, so my mum, obviously, she's quite supportive in the way that she obviously is like, oh yeah, be careful going out and just be careful what you're doing, all that. But she's, she's supportive. And then my dad, he's a photographer. so. We've done like photo shoots and stuff with movement and uh, parkour and stuff before, so they're both really supportive in that way. Being from the East, I was really surprised to hear the kind of support these youngsters have from their parents. Unlike India, where doing something unusual for a career is still a taboo. But I still wanted to know from these guys where they are headed with this professionally. My absolute, like my biggest goal is to be like a Hollywood stuntman really, like the top of the top stuntman is like my thing. Um, I'm in contact with um, Rick Manning, who's um, a stunt coordinator, and I've done a few jobs with him, um, and I've got a few coming up as well. So that's, I'm getting in there, I've got my foot in the door a bit, but um, yeah, my end goal is just stuntman, really. G, the Asian face among the crew, is a budding businessman who came up with the idea of the Urban Lost Spirit. After talking to him, I found out it's much more than a brand. Well, my name is G. Do you, want, yeah. do you want me to say my full name or? Yeah, if you could. If... All right, my full name is actually Ji Min Lu. I'm from China, so that's why it's a little bit different than all the names that you'd hear. Awesome. So that's Chinese written. Yeah, this your... is, yeah. This is in Mandarin. Ah, uh, Mandarin, yeah. Yeah, Mandarin, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And that's your brand, yeah? Yeah, that's my brand. Urban Lost Spirit, yeah. So how did you come up with this idea? Uh, well, basically, um, the way I came up with the idea is because of that, um, of the um, kind of state that I was in during the first lockdown, mm -hmm. the pandemic. I kind of felt like I wanted to do something really great, but I didn't know how to get there, which is then came into the idea of like being lost because I knew I had the spirit, but I didn't know where to take that to, which is why I came up with the idea of lost spirit. So then I kind of hoped to identify with other people that kind of felt the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's how I um, came about uh, making the brand. Sure. So you think you're all lost parents here coming together? Yeah, essentially, yes, because at the end of the day, we're all kind of walking in the dark, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But 
like like my like um company slogan like everyone is walking in the dark but with your spirit we hope you can find your light so it's all about that process of like finding what you want to do and finding where you're gonna go and stuff like that which is also another reason why i like enjoying parkour so much is because of of the process of getting those moves that you want to do mm -hmm. it was really impressive to see the kind of community they have developed they train every day to perfect their art and the brotherhood here is absolutely contagious 20 year old mozi says parkour has deeply impacted his life it's a way of life man like it's for people who have nothing to free run and to have parkour in their life it like gives meaning so when not going into too much detail it's taken me away from a lot of bad things and it's taken me away from like a lot of things that shouldn't be doing and stuff like that you know i won't go into detail but like it's just through movement and by like me liking it the, the, the amount i do it's given me more purpose when i wake up i want to you know do stuff in my day instead of doing nothing i was moved by their stories and the outlooks on life displayed by these young men and i pondered what does it take to become a real parkourist if you're if you're not good at breaking barriers like fear wise yeah, parkour's not for you bones, so I wouldn't... yeah parkour's <laughs> not for you that's a good thing that's a good thing to say. But you the can't... thing is, that's, that brings on to the point that that's why parkour is a lifestyle, as in the way you think of doing parkour and the way you break down your mental barriers, it, you can put it into life. If you take parkour to life, you, you're constantly breaking mental barriers. And a lot of the time in life, people don't ever break those mental barriers. It's a reason why people don't start their own business. It's a reason why they always get a dead end job. It's a reason why they get stuck in a life that they don't enjoy break because they don't they're too afraid to break those mental barriers because being self-employed you don't have guaranteed money mm. being employed you do and it's a very hard mental barrier to like break and i i'm personally in my ideal job a youtuber i would be classed as self-employed and that is the scariest yet most exciting thing to me yeah. and that that mental barrier that's there constantly in my head just looking through analytics, looking how I might never do it or has to be broken somehow. And because I constantly break mental barriers in parkour and free running, I'm used to breaking mental barriers every day of my life. Whilst working on this video, I thought I should try and break some mental barriers too. But then I was like, nah, I should just stick to making films. See you in the next one. Live raw.